now we've entered the nave, the, from the Greek naos. This is the central part of the church. This is the part in which believers uh, come to worship. And what has changed? Our perspective has greatly changed. In the narthex, our back was to the world and we could escape into the world at any time. Here in the nave, no matter where we look, other members of our family, our brothers and sisters in Christ, are looking back at us. There is a gentle reminder to us that we've come to encounter God, not to play bingo or not to uh, engage in small talk. Um, that reminder is the fact that on the north wall, uh, the full-length icons are all female. On the south wall, all of the full-length icons are male. This is a gentle reminder that uh, we are to separate ourselves for a time and that for the purpose of prayer. It's not an absolute rule, but it's good advice. We are surrounded by the rest of the body of Christ. And in fact, we take up our places in an overall icon. We are all component parts of an icon that represents the relationship between man and his creator, between God and the one that he made in his image and after his likeness. So what is our responsibility? We are made in his image, but we can choose to grow into his likeness more and more, or to become less and less like him. Our own free will will tell us that. If we've come into the church, we realize what we are called to become. We're told to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. We're all called to be saints, to be holy, to be separated from the world, while still in the world, separated and dedicated to God. How do we do this? I talked a little earlier about points of focus in different faiths. In the church, we have a single point of focus, which is not really apparent until we enter right into the middle of the nave and look up. We look up into the cupola, which we saw from outside. That cupola represents the heavens. And if we look straight up into it, we see looking down at us the face of Christ blessing everything that is below him. Within the cupola, the, uh, the supporting cylinder has images of the six-winged seraphim that surround the throne of God. Below that is a vault on a gold background, gold representing the light of our Creator, the light of Christ. And on that background, we have images of archangels. They're dressed in military attire, and they are standing on infinity symbol-shaped clouds. They're in the heavens. But there are also two figures in the heavens standing on platforms. 
In the language of iconography, a platform represents the created world. Uh, in this case, on the western side, stands, standing on a platform, is St. John the Baptist. And on the eastern side is the Most Holy Theotokos, the Mother of our Lord and God, also on a platform. They are on earth and in heaven. They link heaven and earth. How do they do this? She brings God incarnate down to earth in her womb. She is the new ark which brings God to us. He announces at the River Jordan as he points toward Christ, this is the Lamb of God come to take away the sins of the world. And by his word links heaven and earth. Below the level of the heavens, the background color changes to a pale green, then to a blue green, and the closer you come to uh, ground level, the more blue is incorporated. In the language of iconography, blue is the color of created matter. What happens when you mix blue and gold? Take two crayons, a blue and a yellow crayon, mix them and you'll get green. The more gold you incorporate, the more the shift will be toward the green. This is a hint to us that as we move closer to our Creator, move closer in likeness to our Creator, we are more and more changed by the author of that light. And this is what the church refers to as the process of theosis. We grow in the likeness of God. So from the heavenly vault, we come down, we see feasts of the Lord. Then on the second level, we see the life of St. John the Baptist on the south uh, and north walls, uh, simply because this is a church dedicated to St. John the Baptist. And the lowest row, simply uh, full length figures of our brothers and sisters in Christ who lived to be glorified as saints. The entire upper structure is supported by columns on which stand figures that are pillars of the church. People who evangelized, people who by their example gave us a foundation. People like uh, St. Cyril and Methodius who gave the Russian people and the, the other Slavs a written language and, and therefore access to uh, the culture, scriptures, and traditions of the Eastern Church. People like St. Vladimir and St. Olga who um, took the greatest steps in converting the Russian people from paganism to Orthodox Christianity. And then there, there we are. We are the contemporary church. We are the church of the 21st century. When a bishop serves, the platform upon which he stands very similar in appearance to the platforms on which St. John the Baptist and the, the Mother of our Lord and God stand, is placed right in the middle of the church. So Christ's apostle of the 21st century is surrounded by his 21st century flock and in turn surrounded by all of the prior centuries of the church the church triumphant in heaven and Christ at its head. This is an almost complete picture, an almost complete image of the universal church. What about those whom we cannot see but are in Christ? 
If my great 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 grandmother was a believer, a communicant, um, a faithful Orthodox Christian, she died in Christ, she remains in Christ, where is she? She's with us. She's part of the body of Christ. The fact that we can't see her is not relevant but to remind us that the entire body of Christ is here, you have the chandelier, the Panikadila. Uh, this represents that part of the church which is not visible, but which is nonetheless here. Now with that added, you have a complete image of the universal church. And Christ tells us that where two or three are agreed and gathered in my name, there I am. Well, that means that when we in this little church or people in the Church of Christ the Savior in Moscow, in, in which thousands can worship together, when we come together to pray and to receive the body and blood of Christ, every single member of the church all of the prophets, all of the angelic hosts, all of our ancestors in Christ are here with us. For we are all members of the body of which Christ is the head. <laughs>